In Foundry VTT, usually when you drop in a token to your battle map, it looks square and kind of ugly and is not very nice to use in a battle. Well, what if I told you that you can make your tokens look nice and round and very token-like with just a few clicks? Well, that is possible with a module called Tokenizer. Hi, my name is Fondu. I run this channel called Dice and Easy, where I give you Foundry VTT tutorials, TTRPG tips and tricks, and of course, daily TTRPG memes as YouTube shorts. So if you're into that stuff, hit that subscribe button down there. Now then, before we get started with the tutorial, you of course have to have Tokenizer, the module installed. I will leave a link to that down below in the description box. And I'm assuming that you're using Foundry version 10 while you're doing this. It might work on earlier versions, but I cannot promise you that. With that out of the way, let's jump into Foundry and I'll show you how Tokenizer works. Here we are in Foundry now. So. First off, we're going to go into our Actors tab and create ourselves a new actor. We're going to call this Testy Testerson, player character. There we go. Now, as you can see, Testy doesn't have an image, so let's give Testy an image that we can use. Now, I already have an image that I know that I want to use as my avatar for uh, Testy over here. So let's just select that. Now you can see this nice little image. You can see it on Bumbles over there as well. And the problem right now is that if we bring in Testy now and plonk him in over here, you can see that the icon is this square shape, which I personally don't really like. It looks kind of weird, especially when you're moving it around. It just, it just doesn't look nice. It doesn't look token-like, you know? So let's make Testy here look more token-like. And first, I'm gonna turn on Tokenizer. So see you in a sec. All right, so I have Tokenizer turned on now. We're gonna double-click here to open up our character sheet. Now, when you go to your character sheet and you left-click on the image here, it's gonna open up a new type of window for you. Boom. So here you can see now the avatar, which is the regular image. And then on the right hand side, you can see the token. It's already started to create that automatically for you. Let me run you through the avatar section first. So first off, you're gonna notice that if you want to add a picture here, it's not gonna let you. Everything is grayed out. And you might be wondering, well, what the heck? What's going on over here? Well, here by default, it modify token only is turned on. So click this and now you can edit all of this stuff. So if you have tokenizer turned on and you don't have an image here. So here we have use an image from foundry server. This is exactly like what we just did. So if you click this, it opens this foundry server view again and you can pick your image from there. There's a few other, other options as well. So you can also upload directly from your computer. You can also use a URL or you can use a token image, or, sorry, the token image over here to bring the image here. And then here on the image side, you can toggle masking if you want to have some sort of mask here for some reason, which just means that the image on top of this image will cut out what is not covered by it, like this token is doing here. Usually you want to do the masking on the token side, but if for some reason you want to mask the avatar as well, you can do that. Then you can also enable and disable transformation. So now you can zoom in here, you can move it around, you can flip or mirror the layers. So if this is, for example, the wrong way, you can mirror it if you would like to. And then you can also reset the layer, reset all your changes, and then you can change the opacity. So how transparent your layer is. Currently it is of course at 100% opacity, which means it is not transparent at all. And then zero opacity means that it is fully transparent. You can fiddle with that if you would like. And here you can move the layers up and down. And of course, layers just mean how they are stacked on top of each other. Again, here on the avatar side, you're not really going to be caring about that that much because you are mostly just going to care about bringing the image here as the avatar. And then we're going to hop on over to the token side. So if the image is not already in here, what you can do is go down here to add layer. You can just use, you can use the avatar image and then it will add the avatar it did now here on top because I clicked it. We'll just get rid of it with the delete button over here because we don't need it, but it might have already done it before for you. But here you can see already, okay, so we have, you can see the layers here. So this layer is the token layer and you can see that it is masking the lower layers here. So everything that is not covered by it gets cut out of the image. So you have a token with transparency here on the empty parts. You of course might say that I don't quite like this because it's going to be quite small. So I can't really see the details. I just want the face in the token. Easy enough to do. Just go down here to the layer where you have the image. So for me, it's this layer and enable transform. And then you can move it around with your, with holding right click. And then with the mouse wheel, you can scroll in. Then with, with the right click, we can position how we lot. I'm saying, yeah, that's about right. That sounds, that looks good. And then we click 
OK. And then we close it. It doesn't automatically update the existing ones here. Oh, actually it did. I did not know that. Never mind. I was wrong. So now you can see the token has been updated. Now it is this nice token with this cool round edge and it doesn't cover the whole square, but looks nice and neat and you can move it around. And isn't that so lovely and nice? Now we could also create an NPC actor because you can see what it will do. For example, if we would like this to be an enemy, let's call this enemy and then let's give it an image. I'm just going to use the same image to illustrate a point, but now you can see that the image didn't go there automatically. So we can just go here and click a uh, use avatar image. Now it's going to put it on top of everything. So you might say, well, no, I don't want that. I want the border to be there. Very easy to fix. You just go up here and then move up, move layer up and then boom. Then we hit OK. And it's going to take a hot second for it to think, but it should update here enemy. And then if we bring it over here, you can see that now the main thing I wanted to show you is that when you make a non player character, it will automatically use this reddish brown border and for player characters, it will use this gray border. What if you don't like either of these borders? What if you have an important enemy, for example, a boss, the big, bad, evil dude guy of your campaign, and you want a border that really sells that oomph, not to worry. There is an option for that. We're going to create a new actor. We're going to call that boss and we're going to give it be a non-player character because we want it to be an enemy. Then we go here. Once again, we're going to modify token only. We're going to tick that off so that we can choose an image. Now I'm going to use Galena Brightstone's image from the Dice and Easy campaign that I run here on my channel. Of course, you can find the full playlist on my channel and you can see it brought the image here, but you can see the old temp image in the background. Well, that is this layer over here, so we can just delete that. Boom, gone, done. And then I will bring it over, add layer. Once again, layering wise is not correct. So we're going to bring the border. Actually, we're not going to bring the border. We're going to delete this frame. So here you can see this button, add frame. Click that open. A whole new world. <laughs> Sorry. We have a whole new world of borders. My goodness, there's so many different types of cool borders that you can try out. They are quite small in this so that you can't see the details that well. But for example, we can use this one. It's pretty cool. You're like, oh, that's cool. That's a that's a villain. That's a villain right there, folks. So we're going to get rid of these white layers below there because I don't want that white background. And then we're going to move. We're going to move Galena around there a little bit. Galena is a real bait. I guess let's make her face visible. Boom, boom. It's just going to think for a second while well, it's uploading the images. There we go. And then we pop Galena there. There we go. We have a cool border befitting a boss. We got and against our little Testy Testerson over here. And that's how you do it. That's how you make cool borders for your tokens. There you have it. It's as simple as a few clicks. You can make really cool looking tokens for your characters, your enemies, your bosses, your NPCs, what have you. Just a few clicks. And it's super easy to use. This is one of my favorite Foundry VTT modules, Tokenizer. Link is down there. You know where to find it. And hey, while you're down there, a like and subscribe would be appreciated as this channel is a passion project of mine that I am trying to grow. And we are close to 1000 subscribers and I will do something very special when we reach it. What will that be? I will announce that later. I also stream on twitch.tv slash dice and easy every Monday and Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern European Standard Time. I talk about Foundry and TTRPGs there. I would love to have you come over and chat with me. Link to that is also down there in the little box below. And right now on screen, you're going to see another video of mine where I talk about cool Foundry VTT modules that you should definitely check out if you are a Foundry VTT power user like myself. All right, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and have a good one. Bye.